Welcome again. This is Dr. Ali Mugabel, and we're doing joint density and its properties. That's the joint, the multivariate probability density function. So the joint probability density function is written in terms of the CDF, the joint distribution, as the derivative. So the, the relation between the CDF and the PDF remains the same. The PDF is the derivative of the CDF. The equation shown here is the, for the two-dimensional case, for two random variables, for two joint or multivariate random variable, a vector of random variables made of x and y. Because we have two variables, instead of taking the uh, normal or regular derivative, we're taking the partial differentiation, one time with respect to the first random variable and then the second random variable, while keeping the color code to make things visual and easy. So x is usually written in green, and the second random variable is in blue. Since we have started with the CDF, we're showing the PDF in terms of the CDF. Just like for the single random variable, there are some properties for the PDF, for the joint or multivariate PDF. The first one, it's always going to be positive. It's a density of probability. It's not probability, but it's a density of probability. So if you integrate under uh, the curve, you should get positive number. So this is why the PDF is always a positive quantity, zero or positive. It's always greater than or equal to zero. The second property here, the volume under the two-dimensional joint density function is going to give you one. We used to say that the area under the PDF equal to one. If you have two random variables, second order of, of or um, a joint random variable made of two, then it will be the volume. And if we have three random variables, then we have three integration, fourth, we'll have four integrations and so on. So the integration over all possible random variables should equal to one. This is a requirement, a condition. The third property is that the CDF, we can get the CDF by integrating the PDF. Okay, so we are doing here double integration because we have two random variables. Remember that we cannot have the same exponent, the same variable in the integral. Okay, we have a variable here, x and y. So we need to have a dummy variable. You can call it zeta 1, you can call it zeta 1, zeta 2, or eta, or whatever random variable, whatever dummy variable you want to put here, because finally, we're going to substitute the limit, and zeta 1 and zeta 2 are going to disappear. In short, the CDF is the integral of the PDF. If you have joint, you have to integrate based on how many random variables you have got. We can also get the marginal CDF. We can get the marginal CDF, which is the CDF for a specific random variable, rather than the joint, by integration. So in terms of, you know, if you want to get rid of Z2, if you want to get rid of Y, then you basically integrate. So the, the inside integration the objective of the inside integration is to marginalize y. Okay. This is this is what does the marginalization because we are taking all possible values of y from minus infinity to infinity. And then the external integration is just to go from PDF to CDF. Remember here that if you want the CDF, we need to integrate. Otherwise, you get inside for the integration, we'll get the PDF of x. Okay, of course, we can keep things as a function of zeta 1. And then, of course, uh, the second or external integration, the objective of this is to convert from PDF to CDF. So if you want to marginalize a variable in its PDF, you integrate from minus infinity to infinity over all possible values of that variable. And of course, if you want to go from PDF to CDF, you integrate from minus infinity to that variable. Okay. Now, we also can do the same for the case of f of y. But the, now we are going to marginalize x. So you can see that the green limits now here goes from minus infinity to plus infinity. And with that, we'll get the PDF, the marginal PDF with respect to y. Okay, And then the external integration is to go from PDF to CDF. So these are some properties for the joint density function very similar to what we have before but of course for a single random variable there is no meaning for marginal because we have only one random variable a marginal cdf 
is not the joint, it's just with respect to one random variable. So property number one and two are sufficient for validity test. If you have a, a, a joint PDF and you want to test whether it's valid or not, just make sure that the area or the volume uh, or whatever uh, degree you have, uh, the integration should give you one. And always it's, you should get a positive or non-negative uh, quantity. It should be greater than or equal to zero. Okay, the fifth property is, if you want to find the probability for a given range, now we have two ranges because we have two random variables, then you need to do integration over the, all, all possible ranges. And that's the basic definition of the density function. The density function, if integrated, it's the density will give you the probability. So if you have a certain range and the random variables, then you have to integrate over these limits. Of course, if you want the marginal density function, then all what you need to do is just um, marginalize one random variable. We have mentioned this earlier. Uh, and then, of course, we can also marginalize with respect to y. And we get uh, the marginal um, PDF. If, if you want, of course, given the CDF, we can always get the CDF and the BDF by the differentiation of the two. So the relation for the marginal remains the same. It becomes one random variable. So there's not much here uh, except for number five. Maybe we have covered number six already in the previous slide. Now let's see an example for a valid joint density function, a valid PDF. The question says, what is the value of P for a valid joint PDF? The BDF is given here, it's a joint between X and Y, and we are given the following expression for X between 0 and 2, and then for Y between 0 and pi over 2, and it's 0 otherwise. Remember, for a valid PDF, the BDF must have a volume, if it's two random variable, if it's joint of order 2, the volume or the double integration must equal to 1. So we set up the integration limits from minus infinity to infinity over the two random variables, x and y of the joint PDF, this must equal to 1. Remember that it's 0 outside, so the integration limit now become for x from 0 to 2. I am using the red color for x. And for y, it's going to be from 0 to pi over 2. Okay, everything else should be 0. We are, we are removing the, the remaining part of the limits because it's going to be 0. Luckily, this integration is separable. We can separate the x and y easily. So we can basic, we're basically having two integrations. Integration of, of exponential we divide by minus 1 here, and, and we have integration of cosine should give you uh, the sine, and it becomes straightforward. So remember that here, you have a minus 1, then if you substitute the limits, uh, you flip the order, you get 1 minus e to the power minus 2. Here we get a, a sine of pi over 2, which is just 1. You multiply them by each other, and you, this must equal to 1. So this 1 comes from the properties of the PDF. Now we solve for p, which is the required in the question. It's going to be 1 over 1 minus e to the power minus 2. That's the value of, of b that will make the joint density function a valid density function. Then the question continues, continues as a practice saying, find the marginal density function. So and since this is a practice, I strongly advise you to pause the video here and try to find the marginal PDFs. Remember, we have two of them. We have f of x and f of y. How do we marginalize? by integrating over the other variable from minus infinity to infinity, by marginalizing the other variable, by considering all possibilities for the other variable. So you may, you may pause now and try it yourself. Once you are done, you, continue your, you can continue your video. Please write your answers in the comment section so we can cross-compare our answers. Okay, so this is basically if you want to find the margin with respect to x, you uh, integrate over y from minus infinity to plus infinity. Okay, this is the integration. Remember that it, lo it looks complicated, but everything here that's uh, in terms of x is just a constant. So integration here is, is, uh, should be fine, easy. So I'm just substituting for the value of b. Okay, and this exponential is just going to be a constant outside. And then integration of a cosine here, as we have seen, will give you just one. Recall that this is only true for um, for x between 0 and 2. If you want to be perfect, then we should write the full expression for x. We have two scenarios. We should have 0 
otherwise right and then we have the expression here that's the perfect way of doing it similarly for the case of y we are going to integrate with respect to x and then it becomes cosine y for the given limit and it's going to be zero otherwise so just to be perfect if you want to double check that your answer is correct these are marginal bdfs are valid bdfs their individual areas must also equal to one okay now let's proceed to other examples Uh, the example now is about marginal density function. Find the marginal density functions of the following given expressions, expression or, or joint PDF. Again, uh, this is similar to the practice we had before. Uh, we can um, find the marginal with respect to x by integrating over y. And uh, now this time we have x here that we can separate, but in the exponent, they looks like joint. So it's not as easy as we have done before. I will take the, the things that are constant outside. Okay, so remember the impact of the U of T, the impact of this guy here. Let me just change the color here. Okay, so the impact of multiplying by U, when you are going to multiply, this is a unit step function. When you are integrating with respect to Y, uh, the, the impact of this is just to change the limit. So I can remove this and change the limit to zero because U of Y equal to zero before for Y less than zero it's going to be one so one we don't have to multiply it or show it explicitly the other terms here are not function of y and now it becomes relatively easy so we have the exponential again x is just a constant here i will execute the integration by dividing by the exponent and then uh, execute the integration limits from minus, from zero to infinity and this is the final answer so we have the we have found the marginal pdf with respect to x we can uh, try to do the same for the case of y. And now uh, when we do it for the case of y, um, we integrate with respect to x. Again, the impact of u of x here is to change the limit to start from zero. So uh, if you, okay, uh, if you want to do now the integration here, uh, we have x times exponential so it's it's not straightforward we have to do partial differentiation integration by part sorry integration by part or we can use a table for that so we are not focusing here on the integration but you should know how to do x times exponential i'm recalling our math uh, tool to do the partial uh, integration or integration by parts and then of course we can find the answer for this that's uh, if you have the following case where you, of course, don't please don't get um, confused. U here is not the unit step function. Uh, we, uh, it turns out to be equal, but usually we use this terminology for integration by part U and V. So given the following expression, you can write the answer in this format. And then, of course, for our case, U prime will be exponential and V is going to be equal to X. If we substitute in the, in, in the, in the partial differentiation, I will get the final answer to be U of Y divided by Y plus one squared. Okay, remember that these are for um, uh, the, U, the U itself will work like uh, two scenarios. It's going to be zero for Y less than zero, and it's going to be one over Y plus one squared for Y greater than or equal to zero. So the U itself will give you uh, the, the two definitions or combined definitions. Okay, so... Uh, the only thing that you have to be careful about here is just executing the integration. Otherwise, the principles remain the same. Marginalize other variable by integration from minus infinity to the to infinity.